Hello and welcome to this uh, Unbound, the latest episode of Unbound, a series of conversations with magical Unbound women. I'm Nicola Humber, author of Unbound and founder of the Unbound Press. How many times can I say Unbound? <laughs> and today I am joined by Lara Waldman, who is the author of Money Manifestation Mastery. Lara is an abundance coach and she works with visionary women, women who are here to be leaders, to help them to really kind of be abundant, so I guess to embody abundance in all areas of their lives. Um, and Lara and I have been connected for probably about a year maybe a bit longer than a year now we met for the first time I think about a year ago and we have I think a very similar kind of approach to what like, the way that we work and also a similar approach to abundance as well so I wanted to get Lara on to dive into this conversation today because I know um, for a lot of women in my community a lot of unbound women Abundance can be a bit of a stumbling block sometimes. It can present us with challenges that maybe other areas of our lives don't. Um, and it's, it's a really important kind of uh, growth area, I think, for us. It's somewhere that can reflect where or show us where we've got an area where we need or want to grow, if that makes sense. Anyway, thank you, Lara, for joining me. I didn't expect to my say pleasure. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pleasure to be here and oh. talk about this with you all. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's dive in, Lara. And I generally start these conversations by asking, you know, obviously the theme is unbound. So I generally start by asking, you know, what area of your life in the past have you felt most bound? Or is there a particular situation in your life where you found yourself feeling particularly bound? And how did you move beyond that? Mm, which one should I talk about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which one? I suppose the one that would be relevant to talk about would be money. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. because that's what led me on the path to be this abundance activator and writing about money manifestation um so since i was 18 i had uh, this vision i started meditating and i got these visions in my meditations around my purpose and what i was here to do and be and this life that i saw myself living and it was awesome and I was very excited about this. I had no idea that what the journey that that would take me on though, and that it would take, you know, some time before that manifested. But basically, um, I was just basically living moment to moment, not really thinking about the future, not really thinking about money, not really thinking about anything for that matter. I was just in the moment and I fell pregnant at age 26 which I knew was right and that I was definitely uh, meant to have this beautiful little baby. Um, and I had my first daughter and I was very, still at this point very flowing and everything was sort of fine and I was running on trust and love being a mom, very healing time for me. And then when I had my second daughter, which is three years later, this is when I really started to feel a really huge contraction around my purpose because we had very little money at that time. We were trying to get by on one income in London. And I started to feel very trapped and suffocated when it came to money. And I couldn't really understand what was going on. I had this, this vision of my purpose and this life that I was supposed to be living and found myself at home with two obviously lovely little girls, but I felt very trapped because I, I had no money to, to kind of do the things I wanted to do and live the life that I, I felt I was meant to be living. So that was probably, uh, that was a very challenging time in my life. Mm -hmm. And it led me to explore that subject of money further and understand what was happening with my reality at that time. Mm. So how did you move um, 
beyond that sense of contraction then Laura what you know it's, you mentioned there that that led you to kind of explore this more were there any particular kind of learning points there or anything in particular that helped you to move mm. beyond that well to be really honest with you it's been a long journey my mm. relationship with money and I was mentioning to a client today that actually I've realized it's been about a seven year journey actively working with my relationship with money. So it hasn't been some kind of quick fix solution. But what was really interesting is that, so I, I channel when I meditate and ask questions, I, I download and bring through all sorts of awesome information. And so the first thing I did was ask about money and what was going on with it and my current reality. And this took me on a very, very powerful journey within myself. So I was shown that my relationship with, with money was actually about my relationship with myself, mm -hmm. my belief systems about myself and my relationships with life. And it's, 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 I ended up having to write a whole book about it because there was quite a lot of stuff in there. But what I've noticed for myself, but also coaching other, other people, but women in particular, is it's a self-worth issue. Mm -hmm. That what, what we un uncover is it's actually uh, about how you feel about yourself first and foremost. And for myself and also the women that I coach, I often, we often identify there's a, a belief of, of feeling not good enough, not quite enough. And so that, from my experience, is at the root, the root cause or the, the core wound that stops uh, women from, from experiencing financial abundance and abundance in every area. But also for me, it was, um, it was a bit of a big mountain to climb. I didn't quite realize it at the time. I was, didn't realize what was going on in my relationship with myself and my self-worth. Um, so that's been my journey to really understand what's going on because it doesn't seem like they're connected and it turns out they're very connected mm. Mm. absolutely and there's lots of different layers to that as well like in my experience like i've had a very similar um journey to you around this i think and you know i worked in finance i worked with money before i retrained as a coach and a hypnotherapist you know so it was <laughs> was very used to being with money on one level. But when I started my own business, um, things completely changed for me around money because, you know, it was directly related to me, what I was doing. I was putting myself out there and all of this stuff. And I didn't realize, like you, that it was around self-worth to begin with. Um, but that became clear to me. It's like, well, hang on, what's going on? I used to be able to make money really easily and now I just can't do it. Um, you know, what's changed here? And it became apparent. It was because, you know, how I felt about myself and, you know, I had that realization, but then, like you said, it is a bit of a mountain to climb. There's all these different like, layers of ways that we find ourselves kind of not good enough or we judge ourselves to be not good enough. Um, has that been your experience as well? Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, and there's, like you said, there's so many layers, right? And you think you understand and then you get a new layer and a new layer. Yeah. Um, and I think also, I mean, there's so many layers, right? We could talk forever about the subject, but the other piece for me was around receiving and mm. it feeling safe to receive. And I realized I'd was shown how much protection I'd build up, these walls of protection to protect my heart, to protect myself, um, you know, from life and from old trauma that was literally like becoming like energetic walls to receiving money, but not just money, love, support, all the good things that life is just ready and waiting to give to us. And so I also had to look at bringing down those walls, which is also can feel very, very vulnerable and unsafe. So it's this really interesting, can be this very interesting push pull when you're wanting to receive and you want more financial abundance. And, and of course we want love and good things, but it can also feel quite threatening, which mm -hmm. is really interesting. It's not very logical, but so then I had to come really face some of the blocks of protection of where I've created separation between myself and life. Yeah. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit more about, cause people might be watching this and might be wondering, well, why would that feel unsafe? 
you know, to receive more money and more love and all of these good things, you know, why would we have this belief, um, which is often unconscious, that it's mm. unsafe in some way? It's crazy. <laughs> 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 I mean, it doesn't make any rational sense whatsoever. So this is beyond the rational. This is beyond the conscious. Mm -hmm. So we're going into the very unconscious patterns and habits um, that we create often from a very young age. So it's really, really fascinating. You have to be willing to be a bit of a detective. Mm -hmm. There are so many reasons, but goodness, it's such a deep, it's such a deep question. So I'll, I'll try and explain it in one way. Mm -hmm. In one way, how we grow up, and our experience of life as we grow up becomes our reality. It seems like that is reality, the way that we experience life. So there can be a real confusion around things like love and money, safety and security. And there can be confusions. We can, we can kind of cross our, get our wire, wires all crossed. If we have someone who's supposed to be loving us, for example, that also abuses us. For example, so let's say uh, you experience abuse from a parent or a loved one or family member, then our wires get crossed and confused around uh, love and safety. So we can get all, it can be very, very confusing. Or even our wires can get crossed around um, love and money. Mm. Um, so I grew up with money, but there wasn't that real deep emotional support there. So I made a really weird connection between um, money and love as well. And um, so, but the problem is, is how you grow up, that creates your sort of blueprint, so to speak, or your perception of reality. It makes it feel and look like that is reality. So anytime you then go to try and change something, it's like, it's almost like entering a new world or a new universe. And it can feel very unsafe. So when we start to go out of our comfort zone, it's not to say you're in a comfortable place, but in the place that you know, what happens is our protection systems flare up. So the ego, uh, our protection systems go, danger, 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 alert, alert, alert. And, and like all systems shutting down. <laughs> yeah. And there's an, an element of the self that's designed to protect you. So you then... <laughs> Sometimes, like to me, not to sound dramatic, but sometimes when I've been trying to step out of my comfort zone and create a new reality, it's literally felt like going to my death. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the fear was so great, it was stepping into the unknown, like stepping out of a plane midair, not knowing where you're going to land or if their parachute's going to work. And so it's very irrational because sometimes those things that they can feel so threatening and, and unsafe that are, are actually the greatest thing, like love, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. So it really doesn't make any rational sense, but it's fascinating as well to watch how we can unconsciously push away the very thing that we desire, unconsciously put blocks um, on the very thing that would really make our life even better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's super frustrating as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. You, <laughs> this can be really subtle as well can't it because you know and thinking about the ways we kind of create these patterns and these beliefs when we're growing up you know you you spoke about you mentioned kind of like if you were abused by a parent or someone when you were growing up you can form these beliefs but often kind of you know when we're speaking about trauma it can be quite it might be um things that happened or something somebody said that you wouldn't necessarily remember as something traumatic, but actually your younger self created this belief, this story that like, oh, this isn't, if I do this, it's not safe. Very true. Yeah. So things can be very traumatic to us that don't seem like obvious trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so true. And even a little comment that someone makes. Yeah. You know? So we are very sensitive beings. Mm. I, I think having done this work for over 20 years now and spirituality, self-development, healing work, we, I think we're extraordinarily sensitive and more sensitive than we realize. So all these little moments, they can have a really big impact. And it's sort of a journey of unraveling, you know, our past, our childhood often, often starts quite young. Yeah, yeah. And as you're speaking, actually, 
you know, about um, uh, how sensitive we are, how sensitive we all are. You know, what I'm really thinking it's important to to highlight is it's so vital that we're kind of kind to ourselves and gentle with ourselves on this journey rather than like we can have these expectations of what mm. we should be able to do and what we should yeah. be able to create. And when we can't do that, you know, you just spoke about the frustration and it's easy to think, well, you know, what's wrong with me? Because other people are doing it. <laughs> Why can't I do this? There must be something wrong with me. You know, all of this stuff can come up and we can be really hard on ourselves. And I know I've experienced that personally mm. in the past and I've heard clients speaking in this way. But mm. I think, you know, what you say there um, about our sensitivity, it's really important to acknowledge that you know incredible how incredibly sensitive we are and to um to create space for that and to be kind to ourselves as well yeah it's essential i mean we don't it's funny because we don't transform from well i suppose you can make change by being hard on yourself mm -hmm. but from my experience real transformation happens when we feel safe yeah when we feel accepted and when we're in a place of non-judgment yeah so we need to hold ourselves with that energy too. If we want to shift and change, the only way we're going to shift and change is if we feel safe yeah. and we feel safe when we are in a space of unconditional love and acceptance. And so I would say, and if you feel any, any time you go into self-criticism, that needs to be transformed as well. That could be part of the abundance block. Yeah. You know, because that's like a critical voice that often it's often kind of mimicking parental voices or other people's voices that we learn from quite a young age yeah so it's not actually your true voice and it's really important that that's clear because it won't it will just keep you stuck judgment keeps keeps that energy in place and i learned that really really intensely through my journey with eating disorders mm -hmm. so i used to be unbelievably unkind to myself and what i discovered is the more i judged myself or criticized myself the more i it the whole thing gripped me and I found through, it sounds really cheesy and cliche, but through self love and acceptance, I was able to unhook myself from, from my uh, food, my really unhealthy relationship with food. So through addictions, my own addictions, I've learned that. And I've, so I've learned that the hard way I was, you know, beating myself over the head, trying to stop certain behavior, but it only, it only made my attraction to that behavior stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've learned everything the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now you can say, just love yourself and you'll all dissolve and you'll <laughs> live a life of abundance. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. These were, you know, as you were saying that, it sounds a bit, a bit cheesy. And we've kind of got used to the idea of being of self love and also yeah. abundance. It's like, oh, it's all lovely and, you know, <laughs> light filled. And um, it has kind of got this, this cheesiness, or it can have about it, um, which kind of detracts from the the importance the the vital um the vitalness i don't even know if that's a word <laughs> of self-love you know it's the most courageous thing and the often the most challenging thing we can do for ourselves is to be in this place of self-love it's a shame that we do think of it as cheesy i know because actually what I've now realized is the path of abundance and self-love is the path of the highly courageous mm. because that ain't easy. That's <laughs> the and actually it's an incredibly powerful practice. Self-love. It's, it's not just love yourself. It's self-love is a profoundly advanced practice as well as living and creating a life of abundance. It requires a huge amount of courage to face some of your deepest, darkest demons. Yes. So I would say it's, it's a very, very advanced path. So in a way, because I, I feel like sometimes we can devalue things that are actually really, really powerful because it sounds so simple, but yeah. it, it actually the living it is a different story. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned there. This is really key because I think when we think about self-love, it's like oh, you think about all the lovely things about yourself, the things that are kind of easy to love. But you mentioned there about kind of, um, I can't remember what word you, but you were talking about your demons. Yeah. And, you know, that 
this is what takes real courage and real bravery is to like even acknowledge our demons, <laughs> even to kind of acknowledge that this is part of us, these things that we see as, as not lovable necessarily. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And for a lot of, well, at least the women that I work with, they tend to be very good at giving to others, supporting mm -hmm. others. Like I can always see the light in everybody else and what's great, but, but actually being able to do that for yourself. And that's a different story. And we're not talking about, oh, your hair is nice. You know, oh, you've got nice teeth. <laughs> you've got a great sense of style. I'm not talking about that. Although that's good too. But this is about a fun fundamentally who you are. Mm. And so creating a life of abundance, and it really requires a deep level of self-acceptance and being able to know yourself and be with yourself and love yourself, accept yourself, warts and all you know all the bits the bits that the bits that you judge to be good but also the the bits that you judge to be shameful or unlovable or you know like you wouldn't want anyone ever to find out about those are the bits that are lurking in the shadows that are the hidden aspects of the self and in those aspects those are where we actually hide our abundance yes it's actually in the dark bits and so it take, that's why it takes so much courage because we have to be willing to face the parts of ourselves that feel, can feel incredibly painful and scary to visit and to acknowledge. Um, but it's, it's kind of like how I explain it to people. You know, the, you know in The Wizard of Oz, the great mighty Oz, you're like, <laughs> I am Oz. And then we discover at the end that he's just this fearful old man behind the curtain. Yeah. It's the same thing with our with our demons is it can, they can feel really big and scary and terrifying. But actually <laughs> once we face it, we find that, Oh, Oh, this is actually yeah. quite a lovely part. Actually, maybe there was nothing to fear about this part. It's just, it's just, an, it's just an abandoned part of the self. It's yeah. a part of the self that we've neglected and then it becomes shadowy. Then it becomes dark and then it becomes really unconscious. It can be unconscious, um, the unconscious saboteur. Yeah, that part of us can end up unconsciously sabotaging the very thing that we desire. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think this is something um, that people can find it hard to kind of get their, their heads around when we're talking about abundance, because so yeah. much of the information out there about abundance and how to create abundance, it mm. focuses on, and I think, I think this is shifting now, but it, it's very much a focus on, you know, thinking positively and like focusing on the positive and um and there's not so much said about kind of the, the shadow work that is required um there's something incomplete about a lot of the abundance work that's out there does that be yeah. your experience of work? yeah and I, I was uh, thinking as also about a lot of the marketing that's tailored towards like live the dream lifestyle make your <laughs> six seven figure business you know have the perfect body find your soulmate and it's all like <laughs> look what i've done i've created this and yeah <laughs> and and you can too and it's all that kind of and it gives a really false it's false kind of a, no one's talking about what it takes to get to that place yeah because you know, there is a, a huge amount of inner work that goes on. Some, some people, some people um, with, with most people, there's one area that they're stronger in and then there's another area that they might struggle in. So one person might be fine with money but might struggle with love, for example, or the other way around. So, um, but generally there are some areas that are really challenging and that's not people... I think there's, I think I'm ready to call in a new level of honesty and authenticity mm. when it comes to this work, because yes, we can, all this ideal lifestyle and dream, this and that is wonderful, but we, but there is a really powerful journey to get to that point. And sometimes that takes time. Sometimes that takes years. Some things we can manifest very fast mm -hmm. and some things like for me, there are some things that have taken years and years and it's so frustrating but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's the journey that's important as well, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You know. Exactly. Yeah. It sounds cliche as well. It it's does. Journey, but it really is. <laughs> and there's, what I found is, because I have at this point now, because I've been playing with all this stuff for a long time, I have manifested some of my dreams into reality. And what I've realized is I think humans love expansion. We love growth. Mm. We love new freshness uh, to feel 
freshness. I don't know if that's a word yeah. either. But <laughs> I'm just going to make up words. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I've realized is wherever you get to, there's always going to be more because we, we want to have that adventure of life and being yeah. alive and living and exploring what's possible. So it's really hard, but it really is important to try and enjoy the journey and try and just be with the process because there's always going to be something more I've discovered. Yeah. There's always something. Yeah. So as much as we can, trying to just relax into the now of it all yeah. um, and realize there's nowhere to get to. Like there's yeah. no end point. There's no sort of you reach the finishing line and then that's it. Yeah. I've found anyway. So I've been doing this for 20 years now. I found that I haven't found an end point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we might as well try and enjoy it. Exactly. Exactly. And to appreciate, you know, when yeah. things are coming up that feel challenging or it feels like you're revisiting kind of a pattern for the hundredth time, a different layer. Um, it's like, no, this is what you came here to experience, like this experience yeah. of kind of expansion and growth and um, to experience like the completeness of, of life and yeah. not just the six-figure income and meeting your soulmate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those things are good, right? those things are good and important, but that's not like, it's not the end result. That's the per the point, exactly. is it? It's about, it is about our experience. And I do think it is about transformation mm. and about he like what comes through to me is this is this work is about healing ancestral patterns as well. Ancestral wounds, past pain and trauma. Yeah. And also um, around about future generations. So yeah. the work that we're doing for ourselves now is, about healing the past, but it's also about creating, creating a, a different future or a new future for the future generations as well. So I feel like what we're doing here is really profound, not only for ourselves but also for humanity. Yeah. So for me, this is deep and powerful work that goes way beyond just us. And that's quite hard because our mind and our ego are designed to be quite kind of self-focused mm -hmm. and uh, quite limited in, in, in its thinking. But actually what I'm shown psychically is what we're doing with this work is, is really, really profound. That goes way beyond us. Yeah. So that motivates me to keep going. Mm -hmm. Like when I, when I hit a wall and I, you know, bashing my head against the same wall, you know, it feels like the same pattern again and again and again. Yeah. I get motivated by, um, I guess, creating a different reality for my children, but also for, for, you know, all the people that, we, we're, we impact people without even realizing. We don't even know the full power of our impact. But um, so that, that motivates me to keep going is about the potential ripples that will go out from, from the courage to face my shit in the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And often, as you mm. say, we're not even aware of the, you know, what's being impacted and the people that are being impacted by those yeah. ripples that are going out from the work that we're doing. Yeah. So, you know, that is incredibly powerful and kind of motivating as well to kind of remember that. It's not always easy to remember that when you're in it, but <laughs> when you can. <laughs> yeah, so usually when you get out of it, that you can kind of... Like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it's not easy when you're right thick in it. It's not. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. it's sort of I've I guess I've learned through lots of experience to to have the courage to dive into it and yes. to not try not avoid the pain, avoid yeah. the challenge because I know I've had enough breakthroughs now and supported enough people to go. There is gold on the other side of this. Exactly. If you just stay with it long enough, you'll exactly find beauty in this situation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is yeah. Yeah, the more you go through it, like you say, the more breakthroughs you have, it's like, okay, I know this is uncomfortable right now, but like you say, there is gold on the other side. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like we have this sort of false idea again around that there's an idea we're supposed to be constantly in this state of happiness all mm. the time. That we're, if we're not feeling happy, happy, joy, joy, and wonderful and positive all the time, that there's somehow a failure going on. And I actually don't think that that is how we are supposed to be living all the time. Um, yes, it feels great to feel joyful and happy. That's wonderful. But it's not just about having a flat line of one emotion. No. We're here to experience a whole range of things. Yeah. So again, if, you, if you're struggling with anything, it's not a failure. It's just, oh, what is this? Yeah. What wants your attention now? 
Exactly. And if we can consciously work with whatever is showing up, then that's when we can have really profound transformation and start to, ex to really access our ability to, to consciously create our life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and that's another way we can make ourselves wrong or not good enough. It's like, oh my goodness, well, I'm not happy all the time. So what is wrong with me? And it's like, we're not meant to be happy 24 um, seven. We have this full range of emotions that we're meant to experience. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Lara, <laughs> like, <laughs> we're gonna have to have, I say this kind of every time I speak to a different woman on Unbound, because there's so much we could dive into. And there are things that I haven't even got to ask, ask you about. So I think we're going to have to have another conversation at some point. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yeah. But for people who are listening or watching right now and want to find out more about you and how you work, what's the best way for them to do that? There's a few ways. You can find me uh, on my website, larawaldman.com. I'm on Facebook. If you put in Lara Waldman Abundance Activator, you can find me there. And I'm on Instagram, Lara Waldman Official. And then we can have a chat about the next step from there. Perfect. Well, we'll put the links to your website and social media below this video so people can contact you in whatever way feels good for them but definitely go and do that Laura's work is amazing and it's very very aligned with um kind of the walking the unbound path and and the work that I do around unbound so I really appreciate you being with us today Laura and you know for all the work that you're doing it's such vital work so thank you thank you so much Nicola it's such a joy to connect with you and your community thank you for having me oh you're welcome thank you okay we'll see you again soon bye bye